Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Kakapopo TCG, the premier TCG accessory company, is back with another Kickstarter campaign. They are launching the Dekimono deck boxes on Kickstarter. They have two main designs, the Shogun and the Geisha. The Shogun fits 100 double sleeve cards plus 10 to 20 tokens. It comes with super strong magnets, a detachable lid cover, and fits a top loader of your commander for easy display. It is available with a standard frame or an inner wooden frame. The Geisha also fits 100 double sleeve cards and multiple tokens, super strong magnets, and comes with either a standard or inner wooden frame as well. I've tried these out personally and they are fantastic. The construction is durable and the magnets are strong. My foil decks have thick sleeves and sealable inners, so my decks are super thick. I have a lot of trouble finding deck boxes that fit my decks. Both Dekimono deck boxes were able to hold these decks with no trouble. There was plenty of room and I didn't have to worry about potentially damaging my cards and deck boxes that were too small. These deck boxes are beautiful. There are five different designs to choose from to suit your taste. I personally love the Winter Waves and Midnight Crane the most. There are early bird specials on the Kickstarter and tons of awesome add-ons as well. You can trust Kakapopo TCG. They have over 20 Kickstarter campaigns under their belt and all were successfully funded. Sign up to their early bird badge and get early Christmas delivery of your rewards. Check out the link in the description below and grab some of these awesome deck boxes today. A big thanks to Kakapopo TCG for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Alex, Pounding Kin and Bonder Prodigy. This mid-range deck wants to put big creatures onto the battlefield and in the game with infinite mana and Thrasios. Alex's opening hit contains a snow-covered forest, Mystic Remora, Ancient Tomb, Mox Amber, Spellskite, Command Tower, and a Yavamaya Cradle of Growth. Next, we have Brandon, Pounding the partner pair of Rograk, Son of Rogah, and Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. This is a turbo deck that seeks to fire off ad nauseum as quickly as possible before ending the game with either Thassa's Oracle or Underworld Breach. Brandon's opening hand contains a Pact of Negation, Lotus Petal, Mystical Tutor, Gamble, Mystic Remora, Soul Ring, and a Talisman of Creativity. After that we have Ashani, piloting the partner pair of Rograk, Son of Rogah, and Tavish Zot, Doom of Fools. This is a stacks deck that wants to lay out pieces quickly to prevent its opponents from playing any magic. Ashani's opening hand contains a Trinosphere, Snow Covered Swamp, Mox Amber, Karn the Great Creator, Ancient Tomb, Black Cleave Cliffs, and his London Mulligan is a Seer Step Pathway. Finally we have Emma, piloting Sisse, Weather Like Captain. This is a mid-range deck that uses its commander's ability to tutor out combo pieces and create infinite mana. Emma's opening hand contains a Tropical Island, Underground Sea, Guy's Cradle, Mana Crypt, Chrome Mox, Rhystic Study, and a Wishclaw Talisman. Without further ado, let's kick off this harrowing happening of Hectic Hellriders. Alex spun the card on his finger the longest and gets to start us off. Alex draws a card for turn and plays a Command Tower. He casts a Mystic Remora. He passes. Brandon draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to cast Talisman of Creativity. Remora triggers and Alex draws. Brandon then taps his talisman to cast a Mystic Remora of his own. Alex draws off of Remora and in response, not wanting to share the fun, pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, countering Brandon's Remora. Brandon grumbles and ships the turn to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He casts his commander, Rograk, son of Rogah. He casts Mox Amber. Remora triggers and Alex draws. Ashani taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Trinisphere. Remora triggers and Alex draws again. Trinisphere resolves much to the dismay of the table. All through, Ashani passes to Emma. Emma draws and plays a Tropical Island. She passes. During his upkeep, Alex lets his Remora die. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. The table jokes about how the game has become a burial ground, and then Alex taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Chromox, imprinting Nezahal Primal Tide. Finished up, Alex passes. Brandon draws and taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Soul Ring. Brandon passes to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays a Black Cleave Cliffs. He taps Ancient Tomb to help cast Karn, the Great Creator. Alex and Brandon sigh, and Ashani activates Karn's first ability, targeting Chromox, killing it. With a commanding board state, Ashani ends his turn. Emma draws and plays a guy's cradle. She does nothing else and ships the turn to Alex. Alex draws and plays a Yavamaya Coast. He taps into Tomb and Yavamaya Coast to help cast his commander, Kinnon Bonder Prodigy. He ends his turn. Brandon draws, does nothing, and passes. Ashani draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps Ancient Tomb and Mana Confluence to help cast his other commander, Tevish Zot, Doom of Fools. He activates Tevish's first ability, creating two Thralls. He activates Karn's first ability with no targets and then gives the turn to Emma. Emma draws and plays an Underground Sea. She passes. Alex draws and plays a Tropical Island. He moves to combat and attacks Tevish Zot with Kinnon. Ashani blocks with a Thrall and Alex ends his turn. Brandon draws, glares at Ashani's board, and passes. Ashani draws and plays a Beseju who shelters all into play tapped. He activates Tevish's first ability, creating two more thralls. He activates Karn's first ability with no targets. All through, Ashani ships the turn to Emma. 
Emma draws, glares at Trinosphere, and passes, discarding to hand size. Alex draws and plays an island. He taps into Doom to help cast Spellskite. He moves to combat and attacks Tevish Thought with Kennen. Ashani jumps with a thrall, and Alex ends his turn. Brandon draws and plays a watery grave into play untapped, paying two life. He passes. Ashani draws and plays a swamp. He activates Tevisot's first ability, creating two more thralls. He activates Karn's first ability with no targets. Slowly growing his board and now threatening Tevish's ultimate, Ashani passes to Emma. Emma draws, sighs, and passes, discarding to hand size. Alex draws and plays the Yavamaya Cradle of Growth as his land for turn. He taps Age of Doom to help cast Reclamation Sage. It enters, destroying Trinosphere. Brandon and Emma cheer at possibly getting to play Magic again, and Alex moves to combat. He attacks Tevish with Kennen. Ashani chump blocks with a thrall, and Alex passes. At the end of Alex's turn, Brandon casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up a chain of vapor onto the top of his library. Brandon draws and casts Lotus Petal. He casts his commander, Rograk, son of Rogar. He casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Tevish Zot. Tevish Zot is bounced, and Ashani does not continue the chain. All through, Brandon passes to Ashani. Ashani draws and activates Karn's first ability, targeting Lotus Petal, killing it. He taps into Doom to recast Tevish Zot. In response, Alex hard casts Force of Negation, countering and exiling Tevish. Ashani plays a snow-covered swamp and ships the turn to Emma. Emma draws and casts Ristic Study. She passes. Alex draws and plays a snow-covered forest. He taps Ancient Doom to help cast Nyx Bloom Ancient. Ristic triggers and Emma draws. Finished up, Alex ends his turn. Brandon draws, does nothing, and passes. At the end of Brandon's turn, Ashani taps Beseju, who shelters all, and pays four life to help cast a very painful Dismember, targeting Nyx Bloom Ancient, paying the Ristic tax. Nyx Bloom dies, and the turn moves to Ashani. Ashani draws and plays a Luxury Suite. He taps his Ancient Doom to help recast Tevish Sot, tapping Mana Confluence to pay for Ristic. He activates Tevish's second ability, sacrificing a Thrall and drawing two cards. He activates Karn's first ability with no targets. All through, Ashani passes to Emma. Emma draws and casts Noble Hierarch. She passes. Alex draws and taps Ancient Doom to help activate Kennen. He looks at the top five, putting Perplexing Chimera onto the battlefield. He moves to combat and attacks Tevish with his Reclamation Sage and Kennen. Ashani blocks each with a Thrall, and finished up, Alex ends his turn. Brandon draws, does nothing, and passes. Ashani draws and casts Demonic Tutor. Ristic triggers and Emma draws. Then Ashani fetches up a card into his hand. He then taps Ancient Tomb and Beseju to help cast an uncounterable Yakul Hops. Ristic triggers and Emma draws. Yakul Hops resolves, leaving just Karn, Tevisat, and Ristic Study on the battlefield. The table discusses for a minute and decides that they'd rather not suffer a slow and grindy death, concede, and Ashani wins the game. In this game, Brandon's opening hand contains a Time Twister, Mana Crypt, Simeon Spirit Guide, Diabolic Intent, Flooded Strand, Mind Break Trap, and a Paradise Mantle. Ashani's opening hand contains a Thorn of Amethyst, Phyrexian Tower, Leyline of the Void, Infernal Plunge, Blood Moon, Chrome Mox, and the One Ring. Emma's opening hand contains an Ignoble Hierarch, Urtai Resurrected, Deflecting Swat, Swan Song, Underground Sea, Arid Mesa, and a Peseju who endures. In this game, Alex is piloting Kenrith, the Return King. This deck focuses on evolution effects to loop Dockside Extortionist for infinite mana. Alex's opening hand contains a Morphic Pool, Mana Crypt, Breeding Pool, Misty Rainforest, Chain of Vapor, Mental Misstep, and a Pact of Negation. And Brandon gets to start us off. But Ashani has a pre-game action, putting Leyline of the Void onto the battlefield. Brandon draws and plays a Flooded Strand. Having learned his lesson from the last game, he casts his commander, Rograk, son of Rogar. He casts Paradise Mantle. He casts a Mana Crypt. He cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He equips Paradise Mantle to Rograk. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. Brandon then casts a Time Twister. After some moans and groans, everyone shuffles their hands and graveyards into their libraries and draws seven. Brandon casts a Mox Amber and finishes his turn. Ashani draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts his commander, Rograk, son of Rogar. He ends his turn. Emma draws and plays a Scrubland. She casts Esper Sentinel. She passes. Alex draws and plays a Mana Confluence. He taps it to cast Skirk Prospector. All through, he ships the turn to Brandon. Turn his upkeep, Brandon wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Steam Vents into play tapped. He casts Conqueror's Flail, paying for Esper. He attempts to equip Flail to Rograk, and in response, Ashani casts Vampiric Tutor. Esper Sentinel triggers, and Emma draws. Then Ashani fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Flail then equips to Rograk, and with nothing else, Brandon passes the turn. Ashani draws and plays a Luxury Sweep. He casts a Mana Crypt. Esper Sentinel triggers, and Emma draws. He casts a Skull Clamp. He casts a Tangle Wire. Finished up, Ashani passes to Emma. During Emma's upkeep, she taps her permanence through Tangle Wire. She draws and plays an Arid Mesa. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Taiga onto the battlefield. She casts a Noble Hierarch and ends her turn. During Alex's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He draws and plays a Blood Crypt into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Mox Opal. Esper Sentinel triggers and Emma draws. All through, Alex ships the turn to Brandon. During Brandon's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tangle Wire. He then wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Gemstone Mine as his land for turn. He casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters and Brandon creates six treasures. He passes. 
During Ashani's upkeep, he removes a Fade Counter from Tanglewire, then taps his permanence through Tanglewire. He then loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. He draws and casts Imperial Seal. Esper Sentinel triggers and Emma draws. In response, Brandon casts Swan Song, targeting Seal, paying the Esper tax. In response, Ashani casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Swan Song. In response, Brandon hard casts Force of Negation, targeting an Imperial Seal. Force counters and exiles Imperial Seal, and then Blast counters Swan Song. Next, Ashani casts a Sphere of Resistance. Finished up, Ashani passes to Emma. During Emma's upkeep, she taps her permanence through Tanglewire. She draws and plays a Mana Confluence. She ends her turn. During Alex's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tanglewire. He draws, plays a Tundra, and passes. During Brandon's upkeep, he taps his permanence through Tanglewire and then wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Badlands. He casts his commander, Silas Ren, Seeker Adept. All through, Brandon passes to Ashani. During Ashani's upkeep, he removes the Fade Counter from Tanglewire, then taps his permanence through Tanglewire. He then wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and equips Skull Clamp to Rograk, killing it and drawing two cards. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond, paying for Esper. He passes. At the end of Ashani's turn, Emma taps Mana Confluence to help cast Vampiric Tutor. She fetches up a card onto the top of her library and loses two life. The turn moves to Emma. During Emma's upkeep, she taps her permanence through Tanglewire. She draws and plays a Marsh Flats. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tundra onto the battlefield. She taps Mana Confluence to help cast Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Emma creates 16 treasures. She casts her commander, Sisse, Weatherlight Captain. She activates Sisse and fetches up a Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer, onto the battlefield. She activates Sisse again and fetches up a Nyambi, Esteemed Speaker, onto the battlefield. Nyambi triggers, and Emma returns Dockside to her hand. She recasts Dockside, creating 16 more treasures. Brandon begins to regret not sacrificing his treasures as Emma activates Sisse again. She fetches up an Emil the Black onto the battlefield. She activates Emil, flickering Dockside. She demonstrates a loop of activating Emil to flicker Dockside, netting more treasures each time, creating infinite treasures. She activates Sisse and fetches up Salvala, Heart of the Wilds, onto the battlefield. She then activates Emil, this time targeting Sisse. Sisse flickers, Salvala triggers, and then Emma draws a card. She then demonstrates another loop of activating Emil to flicker Sisse and drawing a card through Salvala each time Sisse re-enters. She draws her deck and then casts all of her creatures. She then casts Finale of Devastation where X equals 420,069, and with a nice army at her disposal, Emma moves to combat, attacking attacking her opponents with everything. They all take it, die, and Emma wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great set of games tonight. Congrats to Ashani and Emma on their wins. In Game 1, Ashani's Turn 1 Trinisphere ground his opponents to a screeching halt. He took advantage of the tempo gained by the Stacks piece to functionally lock out his opponents before getting a concession via the rarely seen Yakel Hops. In Game 2, Emma was able to break through the stacks pieces on the board and found her opening to loop Dockside with a meal for the win. The most viable card in tonight's game, sponsored by Luxury Playstyle, goes to Trinisphere. An early Trinisphere is backbreaking in a format filled with low-cost cards. The stacks piece led Ashani to victory in Game 1. While it's not something that every deck can use, there is no denying that it is an immensely powerful card. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.